Hi and welcome back to part three in our English paper piecing series. So in today's video we're going to talk about how to sew all of those English paper pieces that you have prepared together. If you missed part one or part two of my video I will make sure to link them below so make sure that you check those out before watching this one but in today's video I'm going to show you all my tips and tricks for sewing all of your English paper piecing pieces together to make something really cool. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So one other thing I quickly wanted to show you about basting is which way you push it. Now on these little ones that we just did, it didn't matter which way your fabric went because you don't have any um, little ears kind of sticking out. But when you start doing shapes like these diamonds and triangles, you're gonna have these little ears or tails or whatever you wanna call them sticking out from your piece and that can actually affect which way that you can sew. For example, if I need to put this piece into my star here, you can see that my little ears are kind of going out and my ears on this piece are going out so it can nest in there nicely. If I were to turn this piece around, it's actually going to be really hard for me to put that piece on without folding one of these ears back and then you're going to have some weird bulk in your um, piece. So when you're basting these, what I like to do, and I just kind of do them all the same direction, that way I know they'll all fit together. Whichever side that I'm going to push to first, that's the side that my, t my ear is going to end up going to when I'm done. So for example, Let's go ahead and baste this piece right here. If I push to this side first, when I push the other side over, it's gonna push that ear over to this side. So whatever side I start on is the side my tail or my ear is gonna end up on. So let's go ahead and do both of these sides. Okay, so they're going the same way. And then when I turn it around and I push these this way, now I've got my little ear over to that side that we first glued down. Okay, so now I know both of my tails are going the same way. So if I turn, if I'm adding it to a piece, it's not gonna fit in this star, but if I'm adding it to a piece, those are gonna be going opposite directions, that would work. If I were to try and turn it this way, they're going the same direction. That would also work. Um, they're gonna be stacked on top of each other a little bit, but as you can see, that'll at least work and you won't have them um, you know, going straight towards each other. So that's just how I do it. I just press them all going the same way. Um, that way I know that they'll all fit and that's kind of what I've done on these. So all of my little tails are going to the right on these. Okay, so that's just a little bit of helpful information when you're basting those kind of weird shapes. Okay, so today we're gonna to be talking about how to sew our pieces together. Now there's different ways to do this. I'm gonna share with you the way that works best for me. I did try a few different methods, um, and this is just the one that seems to make the most sense and it's just the easiest for me. So I'll show you the way that I prefer to do it, but just know there are other ways out there. So if this doesn't work for you, feel free to do like a little internet search and see um, what else you can find that's gonna work better for you. So in order to do this, you're gonna take two of your pieces and whatever your pattern calls for, um, and you're just going to place them right sides together and you're gonna line up one of these edges that you need to stitch on. Now you can use either a wonder clip to hold them together or you can use these little sew tights. And I'm gonna zoom in so you can see a little bit better while we're stitching. So I prefer to use the sew tights. Um, they just seem to work better for me or I'll just hand um, hold it. It kind of depends on how big my pieces are. This one's small enough that I might actually just hold it. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your pieces together, make sure your edges are lined up just like that and you have right sides together, okay? And then I'm just gonna put my little heart here in the center and now these pieces aren't gonna go anywhere. I can throw them in my bag or you know, take a break and come back later and, and they'll still be here. So that's my first step. My second step is to get my thread ready. And I like to use, as I mentioned, Aurifil 50 weight thread. And I just like to choose a color that is going to be the lightest color um, possible that's gonna match my fabric. So normally I would just work with this white here. For the purposes of this video, I am gonna pick a nice dark blue color. That way hopefully you can see the stitches on here so you can see what I'm doing. But normally I would use a matching color um, that's gonna sink in because the goal is not to be able to see your stitches. So you're gonna go ahead and take some of your thread and I always, um, this is kind of how I do it and just how I remember, um, but I pull off an end 
and I take my needle and just put it the wrap the thread over the top of it if that makes sense and it's just pinched right here in between my two fingers then I can just pop that loop right through the eye of my needle and my needle is threaded okay so that's just how I do it and I do thread my needle before I pull it off the spool and there's a reason the spools are meant to be used in the way it comes off. So this is kind of like your leader edge, if you will. Um, like if you were to have this on your sewing machine, your sewing machine is pulling it off in this direction. And that's the way that you wanna sew as well because the little twist of the thread will glide smoother if you sew it going the correct way. If you pull it off, cut it down here and put this end, the cut end, by your needle, you're actually gonna be pulling your thread through backwards. And um, I've just found that you have a little bit more friction and tangling when I do that. So now that I've got my needle threaded, I'm just gonna pull off, I don't know, it doesn't have to be a whole lot. I pull off about maybe an arm's length or so. And I'm just gonna snip that and then I can set that aside. And now my needle is already on the correct end of my thread. And I've just got the rest of my thread dangling here. Okay, and I just have it folded over by about, I don't know, four or five inches, just enough that it's not gonna pull off while I'm sewing. Now there's lots of different ways to do this. So like I said, this is just the one I prefer, but I'm not gonna tie a knot in my thread itself. I'm actually going to tie the knot in my piece here. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my needle and I'm just gonna start right at this very corner and I'm just gonna go right into one of those pieces there and into the second one into the second corner and I'm really just getting like a couple like two to three um, th uh, threads in the fabric so here's a better close-up hopefully you can see that a little bit better okay so I've just really barely got it through just that corner and just a couple of threads from each so I'm gonna go ahead and push that through and I'm gonna pull my thread all the way till I have about I don't know a half an inch or so left of a tail sticking out right here. So about that much right there, okay? And I'm gonna just hold that down with my fingers. So I'm gonna just go back through those same holes again, and I'm gonna pull it until I have this tiny little loop right here. And now I'm gonna go through twice. So there's once and twice. And now when I pull that, I'm gonna have a nice little knot right at the corner of my piece. So I can just pull that tight. Now this thread isn't gonna go anywhere. It's not gonna pull out. I don't need to worry about it coming apart or anything. And now I can go ahead and start stitching. And I like to, like if you're knitting, I like to bury my tail in my stitches. So I'm actually gonna hold my tail right along this edge that I'm stitching in, kind of almost in that crease if I can. And I'm gonna go ahead and start stitching. Now you can take as many stitches as you're comfortable with. The more stitches you take, the more fragile this edge is gonna become. If you don't take enough, then you'll end up with like holes in between your seams. So I like to do about 10 stitches per inch somewhere in there. I mean, I don't measure it, I just eyeball it. But I'm gonna do the same thing I did in this corner. So I'm going to take just a bite out of that first piece and then just a tiny bite out of that second piece. And I'm not sewing through the paper, I'm literally just sewing through the fold on my fabric right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull it through and I was holding my tail down, but I let go of it, but it's just gonna grab that tail and hold it down. And as we go, you'll start to see that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just scoot over just a hair, okay? And I'm just gonna continue doing that. And this is just a whip stitch, basically. Okay, now you can sew coming towards your body or you can sew going away from your body. Um, I actually kind of alternate based on my mood. <laughs> so I do whatever just feels good to me at the moment and whatever's you know faster. Sometimes I'll even turn it sideways and hold it like this and then go this way because I can use my finger to steady the needle on this side and then I can use my thumb to steady it on the other side. And I'm just gonna continue doing whip stitches just like that all the way down. And you can feel if you push the paper because if you push the paper, the whole thing will move. If you get just the tip of your fabric, then your needle will just glide right through. And hopefully you can see that on the video. I know this is small, but you really just want to get just a hair of that fabric. And so I'm just gonna keep doing this. And this is about how far, I can't see very well because I'm having to hold it away from my body, but this is about how far apart I do stitches. And I'll try and show you up close when I'm done so you can see that. And if you take just a tiny, 
bit of the edge of your paper, it's not a big deal. No one's going to, there's no police that are going to come and, you know, yell at you. You'll just have a little bit of a harder time pulling that paper out when you're done. Okay. And so as you can see, oops, I caught my scissors over here. As you can see, my tail is now getting um, stitched into my little whip stitches. And these are about how far my stitches are apart. So they're just tiny little stitches. And you're going to just do that all the way down this piece. And so I'll go ahead and finish this up. Now when I get about halfway, I went a little bit farther, but when I get about halfway, because I have had my thread break somewhere over here and that's really inconvenient. So I will go right here and just like we did at the beginning, I'll actually tie a knot. So make that loop and go through once, go through twice. And I just have a knot there. That way if I get a tangled mess down here or it breaks somewhere down here, I don't have to redo all of this stitching. And I have had that happen before. So I usually try to remember to do that when I'm about halfway across my piece. Um, I don't know if everyone else does that or not, but it makes me feel better. And I did have to re-stitch one, one time. And so now I just do that. And like I said, if you're just getting the fabric, not the card, it should glide through fairly easily. Um, you can also use thread conditioner if you want. I don't really use thread conditioner because, um, I don't know, it just seems like an extra step. But I have seen people use that, and supposedly it makes your thread glide through a little bit easier. Um, I personally find it makes it a little bit thicker and so kind of waxy. So I don't always do that, but you can do whatever works best for you. Okay, now I'm down here at my corner again, and I'm gonna do the exact same thing that I did at the previous one. So I'm just gonna get right there in that very corner, grabbing a couple threads. I'm gonna make my loop, and just like we did at the beginning and middle, I'm gonna go through my loop twice, and then just pull that loop tight. And now I have um, a nice little um, end there. My, it's secure, it's not gonna go anywhere. And then now when we open this up, you can kind of see my stitches on this one because I used that darker thread. But you can imagine if it was white, you wouldn't even be able to see those. Um, and then also, I'm also stitching kind of away from my face here so that I can get it in the camera. And that makes it a little bit harder for me to see too. So, but that's it. That's kind of what it looks like. Now, let's say we have to add another piece to this. Let's say we're gonna go ahead and add something else. I'll actually just leave this thread attached and I'll grab, this probably won't fit, but um, I'll grab my next piece, fold it down, and then again, I'll go through this corners and this corner and tie my knot, stitch down it, tie a knot, stitch down it, and tie a knot when I get to the end. And I'll just keep adding pieces in that same fashion. So it's really super easy. Um, and a lot of projects you'll have to just make, you know, sew together a few pieces, set them aside, and then you'll sew them all together. And so I just do that same technique and it's just really handy. Now, if I'm done, let's say I'm done with this and I'm not gonna add another piece, I'm gonna take my thread and I just wanna bury it in my seam here. So I'll actually just go through here and out and then you can tie a knot at the end of this if you want um, I, I actually just cut it off and call it good but you can do a loop wrap your thread through just like you would before and just do a knot right there and then you can cut off your thread and it's just secure in your seam and then you don't have any threads left. So here's an example of a piece where I need to add a section right in here. And so I thought I would just show you how to do that since this will be two seams. So this is my live piece. So I am gonna pick some thread that matches. And since I've got pink and white here going together, um, and I can decide which way I want my little tails to go. So I've got this little ear sticking out and that ear sticking out. And so I can fit this in here and I can see that these ears overlap and these ones don't get in the way so it can go just like that. So for this one I'm actually going to do white because I've got mostly white on this piece and if I use pink I feel like that will be more visible um, than the, the white will be on this piece. So again I'm going to get my white thread and I'm just going to pull off a little piece. I'm going to thread my needle the same way so I just wrap it over the top of my needle just to kind of fold it in half and then push it right through that eye of the needle and voila, we are threaded. And then I just need to decide which way I wanna go. So I can either stitch from here to here, 
or I can stitch this way. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go this way. So I'm just gonna lay my piece right sides together and I'm just lining up those corners as best I can. Once I get those lined up, then I will take my little magnet piece, put it on and it's all good to go. And I can kind of shift these a little bit if I need to as well. And then I'm just gonna start down here on this point and I'm gonna pull this ear out of my way so that I can get right into that edge. And again, I'm just gonna take a little tiny snippet of each corner and I'm gonna pull my thread all the way through till I have just a, the smallest tail left. I'm just kinda hold that out of the way. And then I'm gonna go back in that same area or sometimes it's the same hole. I'm not that precise. And then I'm gonna make my little loop here and I'm just gonna go through the loop twice, just like we did before. And now these ones, cause I have these little ears on here, I just wanna be careful that I'm not um, catching my ear or my thread isn't caught around my ear or anything like that. That way um, you'll end up with like a stitch that's you know too long cause it got wrapped around something. So you just have to pay attention. Um, so now I'm gonna go ahead and just start sewing. And like I did before, I'm just taking little snippets all the way down. So I'm just gonna go ahead, I'll probably stop talking and just speed this up so you can kind of see it, you know, just kind of watch me take the stitches. I just try and be consistent with how far apart they are. And I'm just making sure I'm not getting caught on any of these tails while I'm still over here. And I'm also making sure that I'm burying my uh, tail as I go. So I'm halfway again, so I'm just going to go ahead and do my little safety knot, knot it twice and pull it tight, and then I can just keep going. Now one thing that I wanted to show you about these little guys is they are magnetic, so if you have to stop halfway through your project and set it down, you can just clip your needle to that lay it down and it, everything will stay in place for you and your needle is right there safe and secure. So that's another reason why I like to use the sew tights versus like the wonder clips or something like that. So just another little helpful tip here. And now I am coming to my center. Now if you're having, um, I'm starting to have, I didn't get these on here exactly straight. So my front piece is actually slightly higher than my back piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my sew tight off now so that I can just move this around a little bit easier so I can get these a little more level with how they're supposed to be. And then now I can kind of keep going and I'll have a little bit easier time getting through both of those layers. Okay, so I'm getting right towards this middle bit here, and I'm not gonna cut my thread because I still have to go up this other star point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just try and get that out of the way so you can see it. I'm gonna try and get right in this corner again, and I'm gonna re-tie my knot. So I'm gonna pull it till I have that little loop, and I'm gonna tie my knot, pull it through twice. Got my finger caught on that one. Okay, so this piece is done and ready to go. And as you can see, when I'm using matching thread, you really can barely see those stitches at all. And once you quilt it and all of that kind of stuff, you're literally not even gonna be able to see those. Okay, so now I need to do these. So all I'm gonna do is just fold it this way now. And a lot of times when I'm doing this second side, I won't even use a sew tight because it's already attached um, to that side. But if you'd like to, you can put your sew tight back on. And now I treat this just like I did if I were starting fresh. So I'm gonna go through these two tips. I'm going to do my knot, my double knot, get it nice and tight. And now I'm gonna sew, knot it, and sew. And so that's how you do it if you have, you know, a couple different sides to attach. 
So super easy. So my main rule of thumb is I just knot it at the beginning, somewhere down the middle, and then at the end. And then so far I haven't had any problems with anything, you know, coming apart or anything like that. And then I just do my best to be semi-consistent with my stitches and just make sure that my stuff isn't getting caught on those little ears right there. Okay, a little tip, if you get a knot in your thread like I just did, you can pull, put your needle in the hole and then pull up on that and a lot of times you can get it out. I actually have two here so this may or may not work and that makes me glad that I did my um, little safety knot back here. Okay, so I had a little knot in mine and I couldn't get it out. So I just went ahead and cut my thread. Now I have this little bit here and I'm thankful I did my knot back here because I don't have to redo all that. So now I'm going to carefully just run a little knot right here. I don't have enough to make it all the way through. And then I'm just going to go ahead and knot it right here and call it good. So I can just trim that one off and now I can grab my thread back and re-thread my needle and just keep going. So it happens and that's probably good that it happened on video because um, that's just what I do in real life. <laughs> I just cut it off as close as I can. If your thread is too short, um, then you'll have to just pick out a few stitches. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start about a couple stitches behind where I left off. I'm gonna make my little loop. I'm gonna go through it twice and knot it just like I did, like if I was starting fresh, which um, technically I am. pull it tight and then now again I'll grab this tail and I'll bury it and just finish off this bit. Um, so that's how I do it if I do have a knot or a tangle or something halfway down uh, my piece and now I don't have to worry about that coming unknotted. If my tail is just too short then I'll just pick out a few stitches until it's long enough for me to make a knot um, and then keep going. So I don't like to unpick uh, if I have you know unless I have to so. Great, so now I'm down here at my edge. I'm gonna go ahead and knot twice. And we're good, and then I can just sink this tail somewhere in here. And cut it off. And we're good to go. And then here is what that finished piece looks like. So it looks nice and neat and you can't really see my stitches. I mean, you can see a few of them here and there. I'm still working on it, um, getting better, but I think the more you do it, the better that you get. Um, and then here's what the backside looks like. So you can see these tails um, have been folded because I'm working with them, but once they get pressed, they're gonna be all nice and neat. So let's talk about how to finish our piece. So for example, if this was gonna be my finished piece and I was making a little coaster or something like that, um, one of the rules of English paper piecing is that you can't pull out the paper until all of the sides are sewn. So for example, on this one, I can pull out this center paper and to pull out the paper, it's super easy. You just lift up your um, fabric from the edges. It's just glued down and then you can just pop out your paper just like that and then I can actually reuse this paper if I want um, you know unless you tear it or something like that these are definitely reusable for a few times and then if you look this piece still looks nice and perfect it's all sewn in but how do you take out the pieces on the edges that was my main question when I first started doing this so the way that I like to do it is to go ahead and starch my fabric and so I will take this over to my ironing board I like to use this Best Press Spray. It's a clear starch, um, but it doesn't really shrink your fabric, and it also isn't like a full starch. It's kind of like a light starch, if you will. And so I'll just spray that all over the top of this and then just press it really good with my iron. And then I'll usually set a couple of my Taylor's clappers on top of it. And that's just gonna uh, soak up all the heat from when you're pressing. It's gonna really make those seams nice and flat and secure. And then you can take your finished piece and applique it onto say a larger square background so that you can make it into a coaster or even if this was a full size quilt block, you know, applique it onto your quilt backing. And when you do that, you can go ahead, once you've starched this piece, you can go ahead and take these out. 
Once you remove your papers, I would take this whole piece, I would pin it down really nice and secure on your background, and then you can go around and applique it on. You can applique it like with a hand stitching on top, which looks super cute. You can do those little whip stitches like we did when we were um, attaching our pieces together, or you could even machine sew right around those edges and just applique them all down. But once you starch it and just press it and let it cool like that, you should be good to remove your papers without losing the shape any. Um, but I would go ahead and pin it to your background right away and then that way nothing will move around on you or anything. The other thing I'd like to point out is this was my first tester piece, like I said. Um, I think it was episode one if you saw that. And this one I just went ahead and cut them one quarter of an inch. My uh, outside edges one quarter of an inch away from my paper template and you can see how close some of these got if I didn't get them perfect and so that's why I actually prefer this three quarter inch edge I feel like it's a little bit more secure and um, it's going to hold my edge a little bit better than probably I did on this very first piece so that's just a little bit of a tip I you don't want too much fabric back here because you don't want a ton of bulk but um, you also don't want too little fabric because then you really are probably going to have a trouble with this trying to pop out when you're um, applicating it down so um, but anyways that's how I would go ahead and finish that piece and then I just wanted to hold this up nice and close so you could see it this was literally one of the first pieces I did and you can barely see those stitches I think I did actually a really good job on that stitching and if you look at them on the back I actually used white for all of them because that's all I had um, or I guess I just wasn't thinking about changing colors at that point um, I used white on everything and you can't hardly you can see it just a tiny hair bit on this navy the other colors I feel like you really just can't see it at all and so um, I think that as you're going you know the more you do the better you get you can see my stitches a little tiny bit on this but I think once it's not being so pulled um, tight with the papers too. I think that'll kind of just sink right into that fabric. So here is my finished Tula Nova quilt. I think I might actually stop here because I'm liking how it looks and I think it'll be a really cool wall hanging. Um, but this is going to be it for part three of our English paper piecing series. If you have any questions that I did not address, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. That way I can get back to you guys. If we have enough, then maybe I'll make a part four. But otherwise, I think that's pretty much everything you need to know to get started with English paper piecing. Another cool thing I thought we could do at the end of this video is to share our favorite English paper piecing patterns. So leave a comment Comment in the comments below with your favorite pattern if you've already made one. If you're just starting out and don't have one, that's totally fine. But if you have gone through some patterns and you have some you really like or think are very beginner friendly, then make sure to leave those in the comments below so we can all share some of our favorite patterns and just get some new ideas for projects. So thanks so much for joining me for this video series. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to thumbs up and subscribe. And you can also hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any upcoming fun. Thanks for joining me today and I will see you next time.